Nerd Chat. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome, everybody, to the Nurse Chatting Podcast. My name is Nate, and with me are my co-hosts, JV and Ben. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello. Uh, I don't like being called a co-host, and also I just pulled a hair out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, <God>. I <laughs> thought you... I don't know where that came from. Can I just say it? I, 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 I thought, thought that was... Actually. I thought that was like a big bogey or a grem. Do you ever call them a grem? No. no. What is a grem? No. I don't know. No. No. Speaking no. to the microphone. I am speaking. speaking the... It's okay. Oh. okay. Oh. I love that we're setting the tone with how professional we are. I had a hair in my mouth speaking to the microphone. You might have a bogey. <laughs> Standard? What? What's a grem? What's a grem? It's a bogey. I did not have a bogey. Is it a okay. bit like a gremlin? Is that what it's called? Yes, from? I think it is. Right, yeah. Okay. Mugwai. Uh, an imposter. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have one of them. So, uh, this week we, uh, sorry, I should say, say nerds chatting, we talk about movies and TV shows and comic books and all things nerdy. And this week we saw Spider Man Far From Home. And yes. we're going to be reviewing that in a short while. But before then, should we do some broken news? Yeah. Broken news. So um, we've got three pieces of broken news. Not uh, a, not a lot then, because well, quite a lot's happened. But yeah. we're, we're just going to condense it down into. If you want to do more, we can do more. No, but I've only written down I three say things. we shave off the uh, the 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 flesh of what is the main news the and chaff. We, yeah, and we talk about Ooh. the because if you take wheat, the and, gribbles and you, of you know you, if you yeah. That's, that chaff is the stuff that comes off wheat that you don't want. Sometimes I'm me- I'm absolutely mesmerised by the stuff that you know. Separate the wheat from the chaff. I was having a conversation with Dad about this. Apparently, they that's like why barns were designed. You know, you, there's like a like a wind tunnel through a barn. They used to stack the wheat either side. So it dries out. Well, yeah, exactly. They dry out, and then they would pull a cloth across, and then they would start to unravel the the wheat, and it would blow into the cloth and they could shake it and all the chaff would come out but the wheat would be collected when you say your dad obviously you're lying because you're a robot and you were That's created true. in a laboratory <laughs> so you know Fa- father father <laughs> the yeah. i am father the scientist, the scientist <laughs> that made me nice yeah frankenstein what anyway did we but, uh, we're doing so there was a picard doing poster yes news. there was yes. a picard a, a poster for picard yeah. I, I, at first, I didn't know it, if it was genuine or not, so I shared it with you guys and went, I don't know if this is genuine, but I think I really like it. Yeah, it's good. It's, I'll, I'll, obviously, I'll be linking this in the episode notes below, but I thought it was really good. It's sticking with the, the vineyard theme, right? Yes, the Picard family vineyard. And there's a yes. motion poster. Have you seen the motion poster? No. So it's, it's exactly the same. It just sort of pans back, and all you can see in, in the, is like vineyards, and then it pans back, and then you see Picard standing there with his dog. That's literally it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are we uh, excited about it? I'm excited about it. You're not sure. You've got, no. You're raising your lip a little bit like, oh, I'm not. I don't, I don't know. I was just kind of like, I was hoping for something more, maybe. I just like him and a dog. Wow. Well, um, Can we okay. have a spaceship somewhere? Well, I think it's. I think what it's telling like, us is it's going to be a solo adventure. Okay. It's not about a, a crew. No, I, I don't know if that's right. No, I think you might be wrong. Oh. Uh, I might be wrong, but I think you might be wrong as well. You've never been wrong, Ben. Sure. Thank you. I can name oh, many times. Wrong. Yeah, I can <laughs> say many <laughs> times. <laughs> many times. I mean, every time he's wrong. <laughs> he's wrong now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's good. And um, Picard is my favourite captain of all the uh, uh, Star Trek captains. All of them. He's my favourite. That's Be- fine. All of them? That's fine. All of them. You're wrong, so but that's e- fine. So everything. Every Star... Of every all the Star Trek captains there have been. Every single all one of them. them. They yeah. all have their merits. Yeah. But Picard is head and shoulders above them all. Because he is... An adventurer. He is a philosopher. He is a winemaker. He is a father figure to everyone on that ship. He's curmudgeonly, or whatever the word is, but What's he's got a heart of gold. He is just the best captain. I love that you said head and shoulders because my head, my brain went to the shampoo. Right, head and and, then, shoulders, and and he's clearly bald. Very bald. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he doesn't need shampoo. No, he he's also his head. I mean, maybe for other bits. Of wow, we've gone too much. Wow, no, 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 too no, much. no. no okay. I, I, I don't think there's an inch of hair on his goddamn buddy. No, no. Okay. nothing right, on there. Fine. He's also the finest actor of any of the uh, Star Trek captains. That's the hill I'll die on. Wow. Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with nearly everything Ben said there. Do you think? What? Thank you, James. So I, I tell you what, I got a lot of time for you. Picard is a really cool captain. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I, honestly, really cool captain. Yep. Uh, Kirk mm-hmm. might be the one who came. Well, not first because it was Pike who was first, but you know, Kirk might be everyone's. Oh, it's the animated, it's, not the animated, it's the original series and the animated series and all the films and oh, Kirk, Kirk. But it, you know, he had an awesome number one though, didn't he? As well. So that, um, that maybe that was carrying Picard a little bit. Yeah, Riker. 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 Yeah, Riker. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, Riker became badass with a beard. I mean, wow. Yeah. 
I, I, do you know I watched some... Uh, <laughs> I've, I know what you're going to say. I, I watched Next Gen the other day, and uh, I just put it on, on Netflix. I was like, you know, about time to go to sleep, put it on some Netflix. And it was the uh, Sins of the Father episode, and it was the one where Worf's brother comes on board, and like it's like an exchange of, of first officers, because Riker's has gone and served on the Klingon ship like a few episodes ago. Right, okay. And... Um, Riker goes into Tim Forward and goes to talk to Wesley because Wesley's having a hard time. Because, of course he is. Yeah, and, he, and he sits down at the table to say, what's up, Wesley? He steps over the chair. Like, yeah, like what a, a dude. Riker dude. It was such a legendary He's move. a dude, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's there an was, absolute have dude. Have you not seen those have, YouTube yeah. videos of him doing that all the time? I mean, and it's I, so good. I never saw it as a kid. I no, never me saw neither. him sta- standing me neither. over a chair. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah, I, I watched one recently where... Um, uh, Worf's son was coming of age, oh, yeah. and he was on the holodeck and had to fight uh, other Klingons. Yes. He wouldn't kill him, yeah. kill him, and it was like it was a big bad thing. In the Alexander? Alexander, yeah, Alexander. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I liked it. It's good. Anyway, sorry. I think we can. Uh, we, what we can conclude here is that all the Klingon episodes are the best episodes because Klingons are the best characters in Star Trek. Sure, that, we, that's. We can all I, th- agree I think we've that. agreed that. Yeah, I can yeah. agree that actually. Yeah. yeah love all when is Picard one. coming out? Um, if only there was some way of... I have no idea. Oh, wait, no. Uh, it's, uh... it's on Amazon Prime, though. Yeah, I don't do we know. Do we know that she announced I, it? I've it got is that. On Amazon Prime. That's fine. I've I have as well. Um, yeah. Do we know how many seasons or episodes are? Probably one season they've confirmed, and uh, uh, yeah. Has it been released a, anywhere a else A dozen yet? episodes, maybe. I, is I don't it know. out, out? I don't think so. Okay, Not yet. I don't think there's a release date. I, I actually don't think there's a release date yet, and I may be just making that up. But Come on, use your Tinterweb. Go, going back Stars to the of God oh. doesn't have a release date, but will be available to stream on CBS All Access in the US and Amazon Prime in the UK. Cool. Going back to the poster, yep. um, Dave, our friend, shared uh, a close up of the, the tag, uh, the tag on the back of the dog's uh, neck collar, yeah. or collar, yeah, because it's uh, it's a Starfleet emblem, isn't it? It is, and it says on the tag number one. So his dog is called number one. That is absolutely brilliant. See, Which begs the question. Has Riker died and his conscience been transferred oh my to the God. body of this no dog? No way. You no. have just gone too far, Ben. What, what oh, you know I said I agree with you most of the time? Yeah, now right you've now. gone you've gone too far. Stop drinking that diet But coke. Riker is a dog, right? No, wait. No, the reason... <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, 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 <laughs> he is very good. Um, I think the reason that this... I think that backs up my <laughs> argument that it's just him because he needs someone to talk to. So his dog is called number one and he's going to talk to him and call him number one. He's going to be out on his own doing stuff. Well, I, I, I don't know how many. I don't know how many episodes I can watch of just him and his dog. I think he'll probably interact with other people, but I think he'll. There'll, it'll be a lot of Sol Picard. Patrick Stewart is famous for doing one-man shows on uh, in the Broadway on the theatre, like yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. in Broadway and West End and things like that. I don't know if I be that engaged on a Star Trek one-man show. I say that, I'd probably lap it up, will, but I don't Lap know. it up, he's doing yeah, the dog yeah, thing again. Yeah, Mate, look at you, you're on a trend. <laughs> There's a lot, we've said a lot about a one poster. On yeah, there. no, I but it's... it's quite excited, aren't yeah, we? I yeah, think, I think I'm ready for it. I'd like to see what it is. I mean, the poster didn't excite me as much as what you guys have, but... Yeah. But there's, there's potential, right? <laughs> we've excited you, have we, James? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, it's, I think I'm wearing my tight <laughs> shorts today. <laughs> it's really interesting. It's a really uh, interesting parallel yeah. to disco it looks so different yeah yeah, yeah. and it, we know it's set in the future so it's definitely you know um it's not in discovery time i mean spoilers for season three of discovery discovery might be in that time period it might tie in who knows yes um because in the season two spoilers for season two of discovery they went off into the future they did yes good. S- maybe no, yeah, we don't, they we went off know. into it, they went off into the time, time. Yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but what I'm saying is that it's it's uh, it's time is a construct. Nothing the, matters. The fact that it's on Amazon means uh, the fact that it's on Amazon and that it, that it's about one man and that it's like set in a different time period. It's still Star Trek, but it's very different to Disco. Mm-hmm. It is something else. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I quite like that. I quite like that there are lots of different versions of it. I hope that they capture the uh, the best bits of the next generation. How long will it be before Disney buys Star Trek? <gasps> oh. I don't think they. I d- who owns it? Paramount? Is it Paramount? Yeah, Paramount yeah. And that's owned by CB. Paramount is owned by CB. Oh, I don't know. It oh. used to be a Viacom company. But oh, I love more. Viacom. Yeah. They're my favourite. What are we talking about? Who's going to buy Paramount? Buy what? But no, I don't know. Nah, because nah, well, all this, I don't know. All this talk of like the Tarantino Star Trek movie and then like a continuation of the the Chris Pine, you know the. Um, What's it called? What's the Kelvin, it? Universe. Kelvin Universe. Yes. And, and then, you know, that, 
and now we've got Picard, so we're back in the in the sort of next generation. Next gen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like the idea of lots of different types of Trek. Mm. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It is good. I don't. I don't think I want anyone else to if take the it though. Monster eats it. It will just become. I mean, okay, uh, conceivably it could happen, um, but I think there's enough history with Star Trek that they'd probably be like, well, we don't want to restart all of this. We'll just continue this. We'll just keep this going. Don't know, they, they restarted with the Kelvin universe. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, they can keep <laughs> yeah, that yeah, going. Okay, okay. Fine, yeah, yeah. Okay. Should we move on? Yeah, yes. let's do that. I've okay. run out of things to say. So there was a trailer for Mulan. <gasps> there was. Good. And I think it looks amazing. You say words because I've spoken a lot. Go. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, it do- does look really, really good. Um, I have not seen the cartoon version of Mulan. Anyway, have either of you guys seen I it? Have, yep, yep, yeah? I have, yeah. Yes, I have, yes. It's very good. So that's me out again. Yeah. Back, play catch up. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag shock. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I, I, no, it looked, it looked, it looked, it looked a beautiful movie. That's it, yeah. Um, it looked, it, it, it gave us that dip in toe of what, what I presume Mulan's about. She's, uh, as a character, she's going to be married off. She doesn't want to. Um, she wants to fight because she's nails. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is the summary of Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> um, didn't see the dragon though. Isn't there a dragon that was yep. voiced by Eddie Murphy? I I think they've cut that out of this. Yes. Uh, because it was received poorly in China in the original. Was it really? It was, yeah, I believe. It, it's, isn't it, okay, isn't Mulan, is it a, a, isn't it a Chinese, like, uh, folk tale? Yeah, or like I think a it's a folk, I don't think Proverb, it's, or not, I don't think whatever it's like, it is. I um, what we would say, it's not like history, and I don't think it's um, mythology per se, but it's like a fairy tale, I think. Okay. Right. I think, and I probably have just blasphemed completely. Uh, well, if we have, uh, we do apologise that our, our Western... Uh, knowledge of this is is not good enough. What I can say to you is anyone who listens to this podcast, and you know, hi all five of you, um, of which we are three, and your wives and girlfriends are the other two, right. um, <laughs> I, I have not... I have not watched any live-action Disney remake. And you are... Not one. You are less of a person for it. And, that, and that's fine, <laughs> but none of them have interested me at all. This trailer got me hooked. Yep, I think it's going to be the best one. Well, all I'm going to say to you is, is this guy with two thumbs who doesn't watch live action Disney films wants to watch this live action Disney film. Cool. Can you, if you know that, live action Disney remakes. Uh, just uh, Lion King is meant to be awesome. People are saying it is absolutely out of this world. Um, I've heard I, mixed things. Um, oh, I can't believe it's bad. But I was very much along the lines of I don't want to go and watch it because I loved, yeah. I loved the cartoon version. Um, but I might actually have to go and watch it. Yeah. But it's John Favreau's directed it. I mean, he doesn't yeah. really make bad movies. No, no, no. From what I've heard, though, that the animals are so lifelike that when they start singing, it's weird. Well, that's the Uncanny Valley. We have talked about that. Yes, we have. At length. Listen to that episode. Anyway, Don't make so me tag it, but oh, I can't M- find it. Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mulan, um, yes. It's, the, the blurb actually says, acclaimed filmmaker Nikki Caro brings this epic tale of China's legendary warrior to life in Disney's Mulan. Excellent. In which a fearless young woman risks everything out of love for her family and her country to become one of the greatest warriors China has ever known. You, James. Hi. You sent us a an article from The Guardian. I did. That basically trashed this trailer. Right, yeah, I know. It, it more or less said, this trailer is is pandering to China and how dare it. And and the, the, the guy that wrote it was like, I'm a Chinese like writer. Yeah. And and I don't like it, and I hate it. Personally, I think this trailer does all the right things, and it no more panders, as I said in your message to you guys, it no more panders to China than Captain fucking America. Wow, well, we got the first swear word. Yeah, thank you. We got the first and it word. wasn't me. Yeah. No, well, we Captain change. America pandering to America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Like, it's the same thing, you know? Uh, that's my opinion. I yeah, yeah. That, well, I mean, I don't know have you, if you have views on it, but... Um, I guess... I just guess tried it, carefully here, JP. No, 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 I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just thinking that you know, if it if there, if it is some sort of fable story or whatever back uh, in China and things like that, then okay, fair enough. But it's a film. It looks really, really good. Um, I I don't have that sort of connection with it, but I just thought it was a, an awesome trailer. Yeah. What 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 more do we want to say about it? Well, I don't know what more you can say. I mean, it remind the trailer reminded me of. Um, uh, like one of those Jet Li hero movies, or like Wushu? Cra- is it Wushu? Whatever, or Crouching Cra- Tiger, Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Dragon. It sure felt like Wushu, something yeah. like that, and it, I was just like, um, 
I was transfixed by it. And I, I immediately, when it finished, I uh, started watching it again because I thought, wow, that was really, really good. And thank God the cast are like, you know, appropriate for the story. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's yeah. not a whitewashing situation again. Yeah, absolutely. The printer's making some noise. Yeah, the printer <laughs> is actually agreeing with us. <laughs> sorry. The printer is actually agreeing with us. Talk to the microphone. I'm sorry. Am I talking into the microphone? Sake. Sorry, sorry, Did sorry. Do you know Don again, is it? Do you know Jet Lee's in it? <gasps> You're joking. Lee Gong. Yep. Really? Yep. It's this is going to be a great movie. I think it is. Who's Jet Lee? Is he a bad guy? Uh, I think. Oh, when you said who's Jet Li, I was like that. Yeah, you joke. No, I know who Jet Li is. I know Donnie Yen is. He plays the Emperor. Oh, he's, he's a baddie then. Because the Emperor is the one who wants to mobilise the army, isn't he? Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Fine, maybe yeah. he's not a baddie? <laughs> I reckon maybe Donnie Yen will be a bad guy. Well, do, you know what, do you know what matters? It doesn't matter. Let's just watch the film. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll wait. be great. I can't wait. When is that one coming out, Nathan? Uh, this one I probably do know. I probably know the Isn't answer. Isn't it 2020? It is the 27th of March, 2020. In the oh, UK. nice. Yeah. Nice. I know the exact day. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that good? I, I do think this will be a big one. So did you say, what did, when did you say it was the day? I wasn't actually listening. 27th of March, 2020. Oh, that's a long time away then. Yeah, well, it's not a year. Yeah, it's still a long time away. 2020, when you say it out loud, it sounds like a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? It sounds like, it sounds like a sci-fi year, sorry. It sounds yeah. like Blade Runner. It sounds like... Blade Runner was set in 20. 20- 18? No. Yes. I'm going to find out. Oh, my goodness. We are using... The other week, Ben told me off for not knowing when Valley Run was released. Yes. Ben smashed it, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, 1982. Of course it was, mate. Yeah, of course. Um, Valley Run is set. Let's have a look. 2019. 2019. So uh, the year that we're in right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're a replicant? Yeah, of course I am. Back and to the left, or whatever it is. The the Voight comp test, I would fail. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you would. You'd fail every test. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Every test. Um, yeah, Mulan. Uh, what more can be said? Looks great. It does look. It looks. It looks fantastic. Mm. It lo- really does. Speaking of films, we'd like to see, and this is going off topic slightly. I really want to see Yesterday. Have you guys seen the trailer for that? Oh no, I do not. Is this the Beatles thing? Yeah. I want to smash your face in right Why? now. If, uh, sorry, you're going to hear lots of horrible noises. It's me smashing Nate's face in. <laughs> wow. I cannot. I cannot think of. Anything worse to watch in my whole life. Yeah, but wait, it's written by Richard Curtis. And okay. It's directed by um, Danny Boyle. Okay, yeah. Wow, it's going to be a winner then, isn't it? Because they've <laughs> never, they've, <laughs> wow, passive aggressive James is the I best just, James. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually, I think I've hurt my shoulders because I've become so tense. Why, 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 don't, why you don't you like it? Like I just it? think the whole premise of it is just ridiculous. And I just, I can't think of anything worse or uh, in a movie having to sit down and going, oh yeah, I've so, woken up. Shh. I've woken up. Look how angry I am. <laughs> um, I've woken up, and the Beatles have never existed, but I know all of their songs, so I'm going to l- live off their royalties. Wow, what a film. Five minutes later, I'm finished. Um, I, I mean, is a it a short film? To it is it one that? of those short films when they go to, like, <laughs> Cannes Film Festival? Cannes Film Festival, whatever you want to call it. I've yeah. heard good things about it. I don't care what you've heard, they're wrong. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Your reaction to this is the best thing all week. Like, uh, all week. I, 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 well, why don't they do something like Def Leppard or someone else? Not the bloody Beatles. It's like one of the greatest bands of ever existed. Yeah, well, exactly. You don't like the Beatles? Yeah, I love the Beatles. So what's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just uh, the whole premise of this film. This is like, no, I just can't. I can't imagine watching it. It's going to be like, I guarantee. Two years time, it'll be the Christmas or Boxing Day movie on our, on one of the yeah, channels, yeah, and I'll yeah. be just like, I'm going out. I can't <laughs> believe I fell down this rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look where you look where I you re- put us. I climbed into it. Yeah, and I just fell down. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to watch yesterday. Okay. I, I hear it's very good. So yeah. the premise is for anyone who doesn't understand after James's rant oh just God. a second ago, it's that there is a there is a worldwide blackout. That's right. This guy gets hit by a car or something, knocked out. When he wakes up, the entire world doesn't know who the Beatles are. So that's my only trouble with it, and, I, and I, I, we're really are straying off topic, but the fact that he hits his head, it might be that he's in a, a daydream situation. I said this about Exodus, you know, the, the gods and kings, uh, Moses? Yes. Right? He goes up onto the, the mountain, and there's a landslide, and he hits his head, and then he sees God, yeah. or the, the voice of God, and yeah. then he does all the godly stuff, right? It, it's, it gives you an out. He might just be hallucinating the whole time. Well, that, I don't want him to be hallucinating. That could be the twist. I want him... 
to see God, and I want this to be a sci-fi movie where all of the Beatles music disappears. Well, apparently it's very funny, it's very touching, and all the Beatles uh, music in it is amazing, and yeah. the guy who plays the lead in it is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'm move on I'd because... like to watch it. No, like no, 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 we can talk. You, you guys can't. Can Are you on. sure, James? Because it kind of feels like you're about to punch us out, mate. <laughs> I, just I, mean? I just don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who we are anymore. No, I don't know what you turn into. Where, where is Nate and Ben? And what have you done with them? Where are you? The, uh, the, the camper people were saying that to me this week because I had two coffees one morning and then today I went and had lunch there as well. They were like, you went away for a week and Nate didn't come back. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> you just said to me. Yeah, that. exactly. Right, last bit of news. Oh, thank God. And yeah, then, and then can we do bigger. show and tell and then can we do sure. the review? I don't know what this show and tell is because it doesn't really work for radio, but go for it. That's fine. It's That's okay. Fine. I'll okay. share it on the episode notes. Uh, Walking Dead is over. Wow. Yeah, The Walking Dead is over. Yeah, so that happened. Yeah, it did. And you, yeah. um, I think, um, I, I like Ben to tell the story of what happened. Yeah. Massive freaking spoilers he, there, but yeah. He uh, tried to stay away from all spoilers. Oh, yes. And it was just a horrific. Do, you do, do, you, I tell you what, do you want to tell the story, James? No, do you want me to tell the story? No, mate. I, I, I mean, I'm, you're here to tell the story. So, like, <laughs> you know, like, so why would I want to try and tell you the story when you can say it a lot better than I can? Oh, God. Okay. Tell the story. Last Monday, last Monday, or or it doesn't matter, last Monday, Robert Kirkman sent out a tweet to say, look, things are going to start to leak on the internet about the latest issue of The Walking Dead. It's a big one uh, in both size and uh, concept. That's um, what she said. If you don't want to, <laughs> if you don't want it spoiled, be very, very careful on the internet. So I muted Everything to do with The Walking Dead on all my social medias. I didn't want to know anything about it. I was really, really careful. When I, if I was on social media, I was scanning. I wasn't really focusing on it. I was like scanning through, scrolling down, and I would skip past things that I didn't want to look at. Cut to Wednesday, new comic book day. I've been in a, in a cube for the last two weeks, all right? You have, and, you, and it's Building a, 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 yeah. a, a, a this thing system, at work, yeah, yeah and it's, it's a big deal. So new comic book day, I go to the comic book store, I've, I've got out and I'm feeling great. I've had no spoilers. I walk into the store, there's a couple of other people in there, the comic book store uh, goes to the back room, comic book store manager goes to the back room, grabs my pool list, which is the folder with all the comics that I've got, um, this put is, back, yeah. comes out of it. He's handing me the latest issue of The Walking Dead. Clearly, you've not read it. Handing yeah, me in, yeah, so, in yeah. the wrapper. He's is it still in, in cellophane? It's still, cellophane? It's still, cellophane? It's still in like its cover. It's shrink wrap. I haven't even got it in my hands. And two guys in there go, Oh, is that, uh, is that the last issue of The Walking Dead? Oh! And I'm like, uh, I'm going to swear now. I'm like, mate, are you fucking kidding me? Is that what you actually said? <laughs> yeah, I did. Wow. I said, um, okay. I said, right, I'm going to choose to not believe that that is the truth. If it is the truth, I'm going to break your kneecaps. So anyway, I, I came back to work. Um, I read the whole thing. I took a very long lunch break that day. Don't care. Read the whole thing. It was absolutely superb. It was the best ending to that comic book that I could have wished for. It, it, it was just it. it's got like an invincible feel about it there's a time oh, jump so and a, good yeah, yeah yeah but with invincible we knew it was ending and it counted down a year and then the last issue was delayed yeah. a couple of months sure, and yeah. it was a bit of a thing with this they didn't reveal it was ending they released um they do oh god i always think of what it's called in the trades um they release a thing where um uh, solicitations it's called where yeah. you can see the next couple of months worth of comics that are coming out mm -hmm. so you can put your pre-orders in and they've released three months' worth of fake Walking Dead comic books. Really? To throw yeah. the fans one, off four, the one, fact one, that it was ending. Six, yeah. That's unreal. Oh, yeah. it's absolutely brilliant. So these dickheads, did you break any caps? No, I saw one of the guys this week, and I went into the comic book store, and he looked at me and went, the first thing he said was, mate, I am so sorry about last week. I was like, look, it's okay. I know you didn't mean to do it. All I would say is that, hey, next time you're going to spout out a spoiler, maybe check if anyone's, like doesn't want it spoiled first it's, it's, like, it's, it's got the home a bit from the Simpsons in it oh, from, yeah, from the yeah, Empire Strikes Back, back. Yeah. absolutely brilliant like that <laughs> okay I know I know but to, to be honest though um, I would have guessed it was ending from page one because right. there's like a 20 year time jump maybe not quite that much but there's a massive time jump yeah. and it's like whoa what the hell's going on here as you're going through oh, it's so good can it's ask, so good. Can I ask a question now then? So for the non the non comic book readers, hi, hi. my name's James or hi. JB as I'm called. Um, does this mean that The Walking Dead is done, or will could somebody bring back someone else could write it? Kirkman could start saying right five years in 
you know, six months' time, there's an outroar of outrage or whatever you want to call it of, of people that love The Walking Dead and they want something back. The comic book? Yeah. Was um, it, or, or is that the story of The Walking Dead gone now? Well, Kirkman owns it. Right. Because it's, it's created... It's, it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's Image, isn't it? Image and uh, the imprint is Skybound, yeah. yeah. And so they, that's creator owned. So yeah. Kirkman owns everything of it. Right. So he has the final say on whether it. So he's not very rich off. then. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so he, can, but, but does that mean that, 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 but what I mean is, is the story dead? You know, Game of Thrones is finished on TV, that's it. I mean, yeah. they're doing prequels and things like that, but yeah. that's that end point. Uh, I, th- I think if someone wants to pick up the comic book, they potentially could, but there are characters who are in the last issue of the comic that will have to remain in the comic so to take them up to the last issue so if someone could with Kirkman's blessing I doubt Kirkman would really genuinely do it he could go yeah you know you're what you want to tell a you want to tell a 12 issue 24 issue sort of contained story within the world of the walking dead mm-hmm. that stays stays true to the linear nation lineation of the story then that could happen mm-hmm. I very much doubt it would it's the same with invincible the last issue of invincible had it like jumped, didn't it? Yeah, like it did one jump. page was like a year into the future. The next page was five years into the future. Is this a common theme th- through comic books when it's well, the that's last Kirkman issue? Is the right same oh, he does. Of course, he does. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, what? So no, I would I would say it's not common in comics. Okay. So it's becoming a Kirkman trait. But okay. Generally, I would say comics kind of time jumps don't end or just end. Okay. Time, time jumps end. seem to be a Kirkman thing. He's done mm-hmm. it recently in Oblivion Song as well. Right. So it seems to be a, his way of moving the narrative of the story ahead so much that he can change things just enough to make it different but then continue with the underlying core of the story it's very good so my final question if i may on this subject i'm looking at nate because he's he's the boss um and ben uh it, what impact will this have for the tv show oh i'm um, uh, so if i'm I, honest great question Jack. because the reason i'm asking is yep. you know we know that um well, through your expert storytelling, Ben, that I know more, I know what's going on in the comics. I know what characters. There's a difference in characters in yeah, uh, it's, TV. It's everything else like this. So, what does this mean? Does, do you think this could mean um, this? The next season of the Walking Dead TV show is going to be the last, and they're just going to expedite it because people are talking about that this season just gone was a good season. Uh, I bet okay. Um, I I'm thought it was one of the best they've done in well, a long I time. I haven't seen it, but I heard my the reports I heard were. It's okay. Yeah, but that's based on also that the fir- the previous two seasons were really mediocre. Yeah. They were. They, you know, they had. Look, they 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 took a bit of time sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so do you? I mean, I'm just. I, I'm I'm asking a question. You know, let's yeah. put it out there. What do we think? Is is it is the TV show they're going to do? The next episode is going to be a longer. Uh, so the next season is going to be have more episodes. Thus coming up to the same bit of the comics and an ending or can there is there enough in the comic books um yeah. story to get more seat to squeeze more seasons out well, uh, you go Nate. there's the andrew lincoln tv movies right yes correct that, yes so that's that's tie that's going to be something to take into account with it well i think without him in the show is it is it going to continue well? Can I can I make my assumption as well quickly? Please, Because what ahead. you told yeah, me yeah. in the comics that I didn't know about was, the, is it the Commonwealth? Am I allowed to talk about this? Is it uh, spoilers? Uh, it's potential spoilers for the show. Oh, fuck bags. But don't worry about it, because <laughs> okay. it's, it's potentially a way away. So don't worry. You're oh, all right. Okay, Go so um, based on the comic, so I wonder whether the, the bit where um, Lincoln's story is going to be l- linking into that, that element, which mm. will then pull all the story together, mm. which means that... I don't want to talk about the comic books. Can I talk about what happened? Yeah, comic so, about the comic so, book, yeah. so Rick gets killed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, yeah. which we know he hasn't in a TV show. So that could be that point because everyone sees him as that mm. that that god uh, yeah, leader. Yeah, you know, yeah. the Commonwealth could be the thing that ties it all together. It could be that that's where because in the show Rick got blown up, but and everyone thought he was dead, but he wasn't dead, and he got put in a helicopter and taken away. So, it could be that the Commonwealth have that helicopter, and where they've taken him is to a place that is a huge community of like 50,000 people. They've got sports teams, they've got coffee shops, but there's something not quite right with it. And I won't go any more into that because it will be a spoiler. Okay. Um, It's not not like cannibalism, not right with it, but there's something that, you know, uh, certain people are oppressed in certain ways and it's not good. So... Have they... Have they all got bums for faces? Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, okay. that's, that, bums yeah. for faces? Uh, I, yeah, bums for faces. I, and faces for bums. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, I, I genuinely don't <laughs> think, I genuinely don't think that, that the TV show will end because it's still a phenomenon. People still watch it. It's still a massive thing for mm-hmm. people, uh, fans of the show. Um, 
I think the show had its strongest season in a long time in its last one. And they're right in the middle of what happens in the comic book is the Whisperer War. Mm -hmm. They're right in the middle of that at Mm -hmm. the moment. Um, And that gets pretty freaking dark. So I don't honestly think that the way the comic has gone is going to affect the show too much. I think the show, there's still enough for the comic, um, sorry, for the show to take from the comic to go for maybe another two seasons three seasons maybe so we're talking, before it even gets to the we're talking we're talking about 36 episodes is it 12 12 episodes a season uh, we're going to i thought it was like 16 8 8 and 8 it's or 8 changed. seven. Uh, the first like season was six yeah, yeah it was but close then, more but then they they do they start in like the um october go up to december yeah break then come back in february and go up to yeah, yeah. so it's actually, april it's almost like there's two seasons per season Compared mm. to how the original was. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, we we have massively gone off yeah. topic, but I thought it, I thought it was really important because it, it's it's such a like you say Ben summed it up. It, I think there are lots of uh, actually I will ask another question. Do the people that love the comics love the show, or is it, are there people that are like, oh my god, what are they doing uh, to the show? I don't know. I I think I think you couldn't generalize people in that way because I love I the am. comics <laughs> and I I I have loved parts of the show, but not all of the show. And yeah. the show has done things differently to the comics again i'll say it there are fixed points in the comic that the show has replicated but done with different people so in the show someone got their head chopped off outside the prison in the comic book the same thing happened but to a different character and so so they they've swapped things out and they've done things differently Mm -hmm. in in the in the last season in the show the kid who fell in love with the whisperer uh, kid was um, I forget his name? Yeah, I know. In the comic, but that was Carl. Yeah, well, but Carl's dead that's, in the that's show. The thing, the, so the spoilers for the last issue of Walking Dead. Carl is around in the time jump. Yes. Yes, Carl is alive. Rick so, has been killed in the second to last issue yeah. and was a walker, and Carl shot him. So that and, hugely impacts how the yeah. show can end. Yeah. Uh, unless they unless they have a stand in for that Carl well, character, or the character which could potentially there. be Judith, which is the kid, the little girl sure. who's alive oh, in the comic mate. in the yeah. show, but died in the comic. Let's do a high five for that. That's a great shout. You wouldn't know Rick because she's too young. No, no she, she knows she who Rick is. Yeah, definitely. Right, my mistake. The time yeah. jump has there's been another time jump, oh, so yeah, Judith yeah, was like ten years old right, or something. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, massive spoilers for everything to do with The Walking Dead. I will timestamp all of this. So yeah, please do because I I don't I just the things that Ben tells me are awesome. Right. So all the news is out of the way. Yes. Let's ben, do show and tell. We'll do show and tell. Clap clap clap. Ring a bell. It's time for Ernie show and tell. This is right. a new time low. Yeah. <laughs> as much as I disapprove of the audio quality of that, like ha- holding it up to a microphone, it's Kermit's voice, so it's okay. Yeah. We'll, let, yeah. we'll let it go. Yeah. Ernie or Kermit? It was Kermit's, wasn't it? I yeah. thought it was Ernie. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> it said it's Ernie's show. show and tell, but okay. it was Kermit, definitely. Doesn't matter. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. Um, Avengers Endgame was re-released in the cinemas with uh, and some additional footage it was. after the end credits. Yeah. I didn't go and see it. Nope. You didn't go and see it. No. And neither did you, I don't think. I've definitely, def- definitely not gone and seen it. Now, uh, for the re-release, uh, some uh, little posters were given to certain cinemas uh, with the caption, We love you, 3000. What? And I laid my hands on one from eBay. Ah. And I want to show you all. Oh, wow. Wow. How Look at beautiful that. that is. That's pretty. It is the Iron Man Gauntlet? Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah that uh, Tony Stark wears when he says, I am Iron Man, and then does his own snap and obliterates all the bad guys. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I'm no. framing that bad boy. It's going, in my, awesome. uh, it's going in my man cave. I'll take a picture of it and I'll put it on the social medias. I'll yeah. probably do that right now. Yeah. Should I do that right now? Yeah, do it. Yeah. I'll do that right now. That is awesome. That is, really, that is really nice, isn't it? Which yeah. leads me very nicely onto the first section. The Ooh. first section of Spider-Man: Far From Home discussion point. Okay. Oh, here we go. Well, let me just the move that fir- a little bit. A second, the first thing I've shadow. written down. Yep. Because we're going to talk about Spider-Man: Far From Home, and it's going to be spoilers, right? Yeah, we're going to definitely do. We can, can we not? We can't talk about it without spoilers, surely. I don't think so. I think there's a lot in it that really. Yeah, I mean, it's a Marvel movie. From yeah. the off, it's got stuff in there, and and my my point being, is the blip. 
Yes. The blip. The blip. It so wasn't the... called the blip in Endgame, was it? No, they've called it the blip because I think it's like a, like a it's more uh, it's more cartoony type name, right? Yeah, I'm everyone sure. can get everyone can deal with that. Yeah. A, a, at any age, yeah. even from four till four to sixty, it's a blip. And also, this is Spider Man is the generally the character of the people right he's kind of like on the ground and and he's your friendly neighborhood spider-man he doesn't deal with the avengers style level attacks normally Mm -hmm. um and only the people involved in endgame knew it was the snap yes and only actual fans in the real world of of the movies called it the snap yes so in the film it would be the common people would come up with a name for it yep joe public have called it the blip yeah I like oh, it. So what did you guys think about how that handled that? Because that was the opening, right? It was all about that. It was the, it was the, fir- the first, uh, well, the, fir- uh, the, the very bit first opening um, of the movie, I thought was like, wow, it grabbed my attention. Yeah. Um, and I quite liked, I don't know if it went on a bit long, but I quite liked it. I thought it was really funny how they were, or oh, not funny, um, how they, the uh, people's, uh, people had grown up yeah. and got older. Yeah. And... They and dressed that right, they yeah, yeah, it's good, and right? I like that. I, I quite liked it when they were playing basketball, and then the band came back. Yeah, and they all yeah. Just, I thought that was yeah. that was that was that was a joke that hit. Uh, so we'll that's more. something we'll get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. About um, but uh, yeah, it was it was good. Um, I think the way that they addressed it with the the TV, uh, oh sorry, the news story show uh, in school, yes. and two kids yeah. um, presenting that, I yeah. thought was really well done. Actually, it was it was a it was a really. It's light-hearted take on a very serious matter. Yes, and it was a smooth way of giving us exposition, right? It was yeah. like, we'll explain it because a news story would explain yeah, it. Yeah, of course it know? would. So, yeah, that was that was good. I, I liked that. I thought that was very good. Um, just to be clear, are any of the main cast, were they blipped? I'm... I'm were they Spider-Man. all blipped? So they, were all, they, they must have all been blipped, right? Have we said spoilers yet? Yeah, yeah, we did, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, we said it at the beginning, didn't we? Okay. Uh, I definitely mentioned we can't talk about it without yeah, saying spoilers. spoilers. You were pissing around on your phone, being yeah. all Mr. Social. Yeah, exactly, yeah. bruv. What is your problem? <laughs> Good. Um, yes. Oh, uh, uh, they were all blipped, right? Yeah, Peter, Ned, uh, uh, Liz. L- Liz. No, not Liz. Not yeah, Liz. no, because it's Liz and Liz Allen. Liz is the one that he was in, in, was the vulture's daughter in the first one. Yeah, the one that Ned falls in love with. No, that's Liz Allen. Isn't no, it? that's Betty Brant. Oh shit! Yes, it is Betty Brant. Idiot. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah. MJ. It, yeah. And MJ. Yeah. They. They. I didn't think they were blipped. I think all of those kids blipped. were blipped because they were told they that when they came back they had to retake their. Terms? Yeah, whatever it is. Because the we only, know stuff. The only one from the... Because um, th- they're all like the... Uh, what are they? Like, oh, God. Sophomore. No, I don't no, know. No, they're all part of that um, that that quiz team, aren't they? Science. The Road only life. kid who wasn't blipped was the... Oh, the... Um, the Asian-American yes. young man who was a young'un in Homecoming and then suddenly in uh, uh, Eurotrip, he's... He's a dude. A hot, hot bod, hot bod guy, and everyone wants a piece of him. No. Well, I did. wanted a piece of him. I thought he looked pretty yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Whatever he's okay. called. Yeah. Oh this my guy. <laughs> You're gonna find him, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I'm Please, totally find, him. Find, Please him. find him. Please yeah. find his no, name. I can't find him. Okay. Really. Okay. 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 Um, so we got, we really understood the first ten minutes of the film, then, didn't we? Well, yes, it, I um, thought it was an ingenious way to cover the 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 snap, the blip, yeah. whatever yeah. you want to call it. It was very clever. Um, wind back. 10 minutes because it actually opens with uh, Maria Hill and Samuel L. Jackson driving their Mercedes or Audi, I can't remember which it is. Probably an Audi. It, Probably in, an Audi. Into shot. Yes. And then very slowly getting out of it so that we stare at the car for a little bit longer. It was an advert. Uh, oh, right. Then, I see. Yeah. Did, you, did you guys not notice that throughout the entire movie? No, like, I thought you were going to tell us it was because they were doing something that they didn't want us to see. No, no, Which yeah. was then no. revealed in the end credit no, no. scene. I'm pretty sure the car paid for the movie. Oh, oh okay. Because yeah. later on in the movie, it was like, oh, and here's this other one. It must have been an Audi. Of course it was, it was an Audi. Yeah, yeah, they always drive an Audi. It was a lot Audi. of that. But then we did see Mysterio early on, right? Mm-hmm. That yes, scene, we did. You yeah. see Mysterio. You don't want any part of this. Yeah. That was a really Froses. good impression. Yeah. Thanks, Bro, it's, it's not my first time. Um, so, okay. yeah. Not your first rodeo. So the blip we, we thought was good. What did we think of the story? Overall story. Um, I was disappointed when I realised that uh, a Iron Spider scene that was heavily included in the trailers where Peter makes a quip to the policeman that, you know, uh, 
he's too busy doing their job but now they're going to have to do it because he's going on vacation was cut from the film but then at the same time i'm okay that it was cut because the film started and then they literally went straight onto the trip they well, were at school for a scene where peter was like oh, i've got this plan and this is what i'm going to do to to get mj and then the next scene they're on the trip two thoughts on that please hit me first one uh, the um, director John Watts yes has said that was going to be a, that's going to be a short film on the DVD good so good I'll buy that secondly yep. James you and I had a conversation about it and you said that you thought the first half of the movie dragged a little bit yeah. which is probably why they cut that out because that's from that first half mm. yeah yeah I, w- I, yeah, I will agree that um, it does take a little bit of time to get going but I wasn't bored for any of it no. there, it was just there wasn't enough Spider-Man action through the start of it please james um, you raised your hand um, yeah i would i would say that i was a little bit bored um and i did tell you that about halfway through uh, well about a, a quarter way through the film i needed to go for a wee um and i was at, so close for the first time ever leaving the cinema to go for a wee whilst watching a film because wow. that that first wow I've, i'd say hour was just it, it was nice it was building nicely but i just felt that you could have probably shaved a couple of minutes well 15 20 minutes off of that Wow. Easily. I mean, I like the coming of age and I like all the trials and tribulations that Peter's having to do because actually he just wants to be a school kid. He fancies a girl. He just wants to to, to be able to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's great. But I just, I mean, we'll get onto the bad bits in a minute. But yeah. I'm. Uh, but you teach- wanted more Spider Man more than I, I wanted less teachers. <laughs> Right, so <laughs> a lot less teachers. My my response is that I think I felt the other way around. Like I really love the cast. I think the cast of this movie are fantastic. I agree. I did okay. And I uh, I just loved all the MJ Peter stuff. Yeah, that was that was great. Really but there was but there were lots of filling bits in there that I just thought felt that. We're on the, I mean, we're on the bits we like, James, not the bits no, we don't no, like. No, 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 we're on the story. We're on the oh, story. Okay, we're on the story. We're on the story. Right, right, yeah. the film, right? It's like it's a slower go, beginning yeah. and then all action at the end. Yeah, right? and it just goes, and then there's realisation. And yeah, I liked, I liked that. I just, I think that, that that building of the story could have just been done in a little, little, little bit quicker. Right. Um, but then I did like the bit where... Um, uh, Fury's getting involved, and then the, the, the trip's diverted and does all the things that that's he... That's funny, yeah, that, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That was good. But you said it was just like Spider-Man Homecoming. It's yes. the same story. It is the same story. It is. It's um, Tony Stark has inadvertently made a bad guy. Yep. Who we, f- in some aspects of the movie, think is a good guy. And then there's a point in the middle where there's a tension scene and we realise that they're the bad guy. Yep. And then they're just evil from then on out. But yep. that's Iron Man. That's Iron Man 3. That's yeah. that's but, civil but war. Homecoming, that's homecoming, all of them. Right? You get that moment. That moment of oh, that's Liz's dad. Yeah. Right. And it, it, it happened at the exact same moment in, in Far From Home, where you, where Mysterio goes, Whoa, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> like Doctor Evil. Yeah. I, I actually coming out of it, I, I think I said to you guys, I thought Jake Gyllenhaal was a bit smarmy. I wasn't so keen on him. Having reflected on it, I actually think he was probably very good in this movie. I thought oh, he, he was, was super. I thought, was, I thought he was awesome. My problem probably is that I know Mysterio is a bad guy. Yeah. Yes. And I think I said that. You did. I think yeah, I said yeah. that to both of you because, again, I don't read the comics. So, um, and anyone um, that doesn't also, they wouldn't have known that. They yeah. wouldn't have known. They're yeah. just like, oh my God, is this like a new superhero? Yeah. And it was really cool. I loved, I, I loved all the battle scenes where he's acting mm-hmm. um yeah. and the only reason i knew uh that he wasn't was because you've told me but i could believe it i really could believe yes. it i felt that 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 uh that jack gillenhall played it so well and you're just hooked in it you believe him yeah, yeah. if you and didn't it's all that know illusion. and yeah. then all of a sudden it just goes bang how do you like those apples and yeah. you're like, if wow. you if you didn't know if you didn't have a grounding in the comics or watch the cartoon from the 90s or have any idea who mysterio was if you didn't know who that character was that hit you as hard as uh, the reveal in Homecoming that actually Vulture is Liz's dad. Yeah. Because you're like, holy crap, we just thought he was a good guy, you know? And he was a hero from a different dimension. So and I can believe that happens because of the snap, and that was all cosmic. If you were to write uh, an essay about this movie, you might 
parallel the fact that the illusions within the movie oh. are running at the same time as the illusions without the movie. Well, oh, you're so deep sometimes. Do you know what I mean? No, Peter. I understand. No, if that was a, if that was an exam question, yeah. I'd be like, I would sorry, I don't wrong. understand the question. <laughs> I don't understand the question. Peter, Peter is fooled throughout the movie, and so are the audience <laughs> until uh, yes. the reveal moment. Yes, at which point the illusions disappear for yeah. everyone. Yes. Because we are Peter Parker in this movie. Yeah, 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 we are. We absolutely are. We, you, you, you've hit the nail on the head, as you do sometimes, because you did film studies. No, it's because you did film studies. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would have known it did better. Did you guys know that I studied? Yeah, it's yeah. come up once or yeah, twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought that the film got better and better as it went along. Yes. I thought it absolutely, and um, I thought the ending was great. I genuinely did. And when, when the film ended and we did the thing that we don't normally do, actually, we all sort of said, "Are we going to say if we like this film or not?" And I said, "I thought that was absolutely." Brilliant! It was I really quite enjoyed it. To actually, talk about it after I, I felt like it was we, normally we just like clam it up, don't yeah, we? Like, yeah, yeah uh, you're right. Yeah, good. Okay, bye then. Let's go. <laughs> no, it was nice. It was it's nice. it's it my nice influence like, on the team. Yeah, it was nice to actually have like human interactions. Yeah, with I know. Guys yeah. And then do a podcast. Oh, yeah. I disagree. I hate that. But yeah, fine. <laughs> so yeah, I think no, I think it was. I think it was a good story. I think it was solid in in that it's tried and tested and it works. Um, my only criticism about it would be that I think it felt like we'd sort of seen. It was a Xerox before. of uh, of Homecoming. Oh, hit your hit your hit your laptop, why don't you? Oh, Jesus. Mm. Yeah. But otherwise, story. Yeah, good. Yeah, definitely good. I think I wasn't too sure whether I'd watch it again. Now, after the reflection, I'd watch it again. Good. Maybe I, go for a wee before you put it on. Well, this maybe I, I'm going to need to just make sure I don't have a, a bottle of beer before I go and watch it next time. Because did you have a bottle of beer before yeah, you went? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, Corona. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, there are other balls of beer as well, but Corona yeah. my favourite. Two for five pound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag best club. <laughs> best club. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, the story, uh, the 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 key of the story was that I couldn't wait for them to like have the kiss moment. Like that, the, their relationship was driving the story for me. Yeah, and yeah, I okay. like uh yeah. I I thought it was I thought um MJ was 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 brilliant. She's and, great. Yeah. Um her characterization is absolutely just, brilliant. Yeah. Just the how she can be so she cut that facade again an illusion yeah, yeah. um of this hard-nailed type of girl who won't take anything and then you see that sensitive side when she's talking with with Peter on the um on the bridge yeah. and basically going uh, but basically she said she's stalking him yeah, <laughs> fundamentally yeah, yeah, but in a yeah. much nicer way than that and he's kind of like oh wow there's, and there's but there's a love moment before that when he decides he he gets the courage to ask her to go out and on a walk with him yeah and before he even finishes his sentence she says yes and yeah and like you say it's that lovely moment of her revealing her softer side Whereas she's normally, like he says, oh, you look pretty. And she's like, what? So that means I have value. Therefore That's I have the, value. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, who are you? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. It's so lovely to see. I was, I really it's just a defense. It humanizes both of them. Yes. Do you it's know a what defense I mean? mechanism for her, isn't it? Yeah. She, she pushes people away to feel powerful and in control of the situation. Yeah. You know, I'm, I forget things a lot. Um, in Homecoming, does it talk about MJ's backstory at all or anything like that? I no, can't remember. She's like a side character, she's, isn't yeah, she? She's a character. I, it's interesting that they've really sort of leaned into her being MJ because she's not Mary Jane. She's Michelle Jones. Jones. So the MJ character in the comics is Mary Jane. Right. But I quite like that they've said, well, it is MJ, but it's a different version of MJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but she's keeping the same characterization, which is, which is great. She's this sort of sassy... In love with Peter, but in love with Peter and Sassy, but other than that, there's not a lot of similarities there, right? Oh, I think so. I think she's a strong female. Oh character. well, yeah, she's a strong female character, but she's not a model. You know, she doesn't get by on her looks. She doesn't care about her looks. But she I'm just like characterization. Oh, okay, fine. So like, fine, fine, fine. She's a hard hitter who will go and get what she wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's MJ. Yeah, damn right. Yeah, okay, it, good. Yeah. yeah, good story. Um, I, I actually think. Flash had a bit more funny stuff I in it. I loved watching this movie. I thought he was really good. I thought I liked the way, I liked the Flash mob. I liked the way that... Did that you know, it took me at least three mentions of Flash mob for me to get what Flash mob actually meant. It's yeah. a play on the word Flash mob and his name is Flash and he has a mob that follow him on social media. Yeah. Mm. And I thought to myself, God, I'm such a simpleton. <laughs> I'm, glad, so I'm glad that Ben's explained it to me because I didn't get in that. <laughs> I absolutely didn't get it. I found him annoying as hell. He's supposed to be, he's supposed to be right? Yeah. That's why he's so oh good. Oh, my God, he was he's annoying. So, so and Ned annoying. Ned is funny and Betty's funny. I, I thought the cast was great in this. I, I like the teachers. Even oh, J.B. Smooth. Now, now, Ben. Let's. This is where we'll slide. We'll jump one. We'll jump one section because I think James and I are in agreement on this. Yes. What was bad about the movie? There were some jokes that did not land. 
I, I felt that it, I laughed more than most people in the cinema, actually. Yes, you did. Yeah. Maybe that's but because I... But you laughed I, a lot. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but what I will say is that okay. um, I, I basically said, when I've seen... Marvel movies in the past, you get a good, you get a good hit rate of jokes and yeah. slapstick comedy, um, where uh, and it wasn't recycled all the time. Yeah. So um, where you get, um, I'm sorry, uh, is it Ned and Betty? Betty and they 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 fall in love on the plane. Hashtag spoiler again. Yeah. Um, and then they they're like, oh darling, or whatever it is. I found that funny the first time. Yeah. Second time, I was okay. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. I'm like, you need to stop now yeah. because it really <laughs> is. It's actually detracting, and maybe that's why I felt that the, uh, the 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 bit at the start was was dragging along because there was lots of that filling bits in. Yeah. I didn't I didn't really like it, um, but the the jokes didn't land as well as they normally do in a Marvel film. There was a there's a moment when he's he's trying to keep the tower. Um, upright and it does eventually fall and it's like a bell tower yes and he's he bangs his head on the bell twice and it's it's like something from the sort of 1940s the plank where you know someone's got a long plank on their shoulders and they spin it around they it's three the stooges or something yeah, isn't yeah. It? and it wasn't funny i didn't think i and it was you're it, so grumpy no, and old I'm not grumpy. i am normally the funniest the, the, i am the funniest I, I okay just, <laughs> i just i thought it was there are other ways to show that he's struggling Spider-Man 2 shows us that perfectly when he's on the train and he's like struggling you see it in his face okay yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I just thought it was like oh there's an, another thing he's got to overcome and it's funny I didn't think it was I, funny I, mm. I, I laughed I, can I completely disagree I thought about you Ben I, I thought the teachers were awful yeah again no. some of it was um, I, can't, I can't remember um, the guy with the glasses the actor he's in uh, Silicon Valley and he plays a character called Guilfoyle I think yes you're right and he Monster. is absolutely amazing in that right. hey, the character that he plays he nails it and maybe that was what I was looking at I was kind of like please be more like Guilford please yeah, and but he that, didn't and that guy though has um, he was always a little bit unsure in Homecoming skipped to five years later he didn't blip his yeah. wife he thought did turns out she didn't she made up that she did and she divorced him so he's lived through all of that and he's sort of on his nerves and he's taking kids away. Uh, and you heard in the homecoming that he's lost a student on a, on a, on a trip before. So he yeah. was always on his nerves. And but I thought that he portrayed that superbly. But the, the, the teachers fail. The, the teachers are the bad bit of the story because the story doesn't work if you look at it from the teacher's point of view. They're on a science trip. They don't get to any sciencey things. And their journey just just spirals out of control and they don't question it yeah and that that's the bit where you for me where you i step back and go like what is going on mm. if i know peter's got to be in the place for nick fury's there and he's got to do all the fights and stuff but when you then step back and they're like oh yeah well now we're in Prague, oh yeah don't we don't scratch the surface exactly. nothing makes sense exactly. yeah yeah yeah, Whereas yeah i think a lot of marvel movies generally you can scratch the surface they try to be a bit cleverer or a, little, a lot simpler mm. so that when you scratch yourself it doesn't matter mm. this got a little bit convoluted about yeah we'll, but we'll I, just I, change the plans and we'll I, just do this I, I tried not to focus on that too much I just tried to enjoy the ride I didn't I didn't focus on it but having reflected okay fine yeah Yeah, I well, love yeah. the ride but yeah. uh, there were just bits in it that I wish there um, were turns you wished it didn't take yeah yeah just, it just like I said it just, it was, it's been Marvel films have, in the past have been funnier yeah and, and it's here I would say Probably out of the slapstick moments, that probably one out of three hit in that film. Maybe, for me, yeah. Yeah. for wow. me, I'm, I'm, I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I might need to watch it again because I was also thinking I needed a week. I uh, found it a lot funnier than you guys obviously did. No, I did find it funny, and I feel like we're being dang on it because I actually thoroughly enjoyed this film. Agreed. I, I agree. Absolutely agree. But I remember coming out of Homecoming mm -hmm. and saying, I think that's one of my favourite Marvel movies, and I didn't think it was going to be. Mm -hmm. This one, I came out and I and I was like. That was really good. Mm. And that's kind of where I left it. Right, okay. I think Homecoming is a more solid movie. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take I that. I think Vulture might be a better bad guy. Yes. <laughs> he's more menacing. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he's more of a... Yeah, okay. Because well, I know what Vulture wanted. Right? He wanted money. wanted to make money. Yeah. Because he was conned out of money by Tony Stark or S.H.I.E.L.D. or something. Like, yeah, yeah. Tony yeah. Stark created that bad guy. Yeah. What did, what did Mysterio want? Uh, he wanted power, and Tony Stark took power away from him. He wanted to be Iron Man. Okay. Fact. But could, he, could he have been Iron Man with 
No. Resolution. Really, so no. Well, we kn that's the whole point, isn't it? So whilst uh, whilst we look at how he... The way that he was playing the story to the audience, Mysterio, we were like, okay. But it wasn't until he started actually battling Spider-Man properly when he drives him into the building in Berlin. Yeah. In the, so, and, and Peter Parker's... Because he hasn't got his um, spider sense, it's yeah. Tinkle. He's a piece of Tingle, yeah. Tingle yeah. or Tinkle? Tingle. Tingle. <laughs> Twinkle. <laughs> um, that's when he starts using it to def to sort of um, uh, confuse Spider-Man. Yeah. Because he hasn't got that. So, you know, that's how he's going to beat people, by the, by the illusions. By the illusions yeah. So he creates the illusions of the baddies because that's the baddies. Yeah, am I, I, mean, the am, am I 12? No, no, that's <laughs> oh, right. I know what you mean, yeah. James. Yeah. He, he yeah. creates that to be able to put himself on a pedestal because El and then if someone really came like a, a Thanos, mm. how would he do it? He would have to play mind and, and trap Thanos in something yeah. to be able to feel like he was fighting loads of people. But it would never work though, right? Because, Why? Because even... Why? Because Spider-Man turning up saw through it eventually. So if, if someone like Captain America or Iron Man turned up, they would eventually or very quickly figure it out as well. Why? Because you told me that Spider-Man is like super intelligent. He is super intelligent. You know, what about the Hulk? Hulk is not... And would he just smash, try and smash his way out of this yeah. mind? Co it's like a mind control, isn't yeah, it? I I, you're right. I, I just thank you. I just <laughs> don't think it's quite as. It's not a power. It's not like a superpower. Yeah, and I think it's maybe that's the point that it's hollow. Yeah, and it is just fake. Yeah, um, but I, but maybe he. Mysterio doesn't realize how fake it is. Yeah, well, I didn't realize that one until you see towards the end of the film that he's. Uh, the the Mysterio character is is just an illusion flying around. Yeah, mm. and he's. I just knocked the microphone. I'm really sorry because I'm so animated you today. Animated Whoa! Today. Yeah, um, yeah. and I didn't realize that. And then when you see him like on the bridge and he's got all the drones around him, I'm just like, this is. Oh, he's in a mocap suit. Yeah, I love that he was in a mocap suit. This shit's mad. It's good. I like it. I yeah. like it, the fact that you're. You're tricking the mind. Mm. A, uh, a bog standard individual that doesn't have. Spider senses, yeah. or being able to work something out in that way, would be completely caught up in that. Yeah, and hologram. I, yeah. And I, I love that he had a team of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because and they were all well. Two of them were uh, uh, burnt by Stark as well. Yeah. well one of them well, was. They were all no, they're, supposed no, to be. Yeah. They're yeah, all yeah, in they there, but yeah. they, they only named a few. But they, yeah. they were all supposed to be. Um, because it, to take that character from the comics to lift it straight in. It is ridiculous that one man would be able to do all that, mm. especially with the sort of technology of these days. So I really loved when he had a team, mm -hmm. um, and that was the real surprise for me. You know, when when the illusion in the bar disappears, yes, and the people start disappearing, yep. But then there's still some people there. Yeah, I wonder what the freaking hell was going exactly. on there. And I was for like, me, that was the moment where I was like, oh, that's cool. There's other people in on it. And he started was laughing. My, that, that was, was really twist. cool. Yeah, that was where, really cool. Yeah, um, yeah. I, it's, it is a good movie. I mean, uh, what bit are we on? We're, we're I was just about to say that. What's bad. I think we're on what was uh, bad. I, I need to agree with James that I really, really liked the Mysterio illusion, but he put Spider Man in, in Berlin. I thought that that bit was straight out of the comics, straight out of the cartoon, and I thought it was superbly done. And the only thing that was missing from that scene was Mysterio taking off his helmet and it becoming a basketball. That was the only thing that was missing from it. Other <laughs> oh, than wow. that, it was absolutely bang on. I loved it loved it there were so good. many scenes the only thing one thing that i thought that turned out to be there was a reason for it the one thing i didn't like about the film was the portrayal of nick fury i thought he was an absolute fucking dick in this film mm. and then you yeah. find out why i don't know if i thought well, he was a dick i thought he was useless or at least comedy i was like why is nick fury making these mistakes or quips like this i didn't get why he was doing yeah that. i agree with you i and thought then... they've screwed nick fury yeah and then we then you realize are we going to tell that now or yeah, yeah. yeah especially okay. as you get the joke of him like ringing him yeah nick fury wouldn't do that nick yeah. fury would turn up yeah straight away so yes yeah, so then the reveal that they were scrolls um boom just like, drop that in there yeah just yeah um the scrolls from uh captain marvel as well yeah 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 um so there's a, there's a big question as to how long Nick Fury has been a scroll. Uh, hasn't that been answered? And that has been answered. Okay. For this film. Just for this film. This film. So Nick Fury yeah. was Nick Fury at the end of Endgame in the funeral. I thought so. So it, it, it's it, we don't need to speculate too much. Is that possibly setting up some kind of secret invasion? Maybe I potentially down the it. down the line. I maybe not. It. 
Who knows? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, um, I, yeah I, I liked the fact that you then found out that, yeah, okay, Nick Fury's a dick in this. Why is he a dick? Because it's not Nick Fury. It's someone, this is how Nick Fury would act. So I'll just turn it up to 11 a little bit, you know? So the bit that I, the bit that then, once you've, once you've had the Nick Fury is a scroll in that, I know we're, we've jumped right at the end and we'll come back into the movie. We have, yes. Can we? Yeah. <laughs> so when we see Nick Fury then being on holiday and then getting up and being on a, sh- a ship in the middle of space, yep. that is, for me, 100% leading into the Eternals, which is the next Marvel movie, which is all set in space. Is that like, definitely the next Mar- yeah, uh, Marvel it's movie? Uh, they haven't, they, they've, they're, they've got their at San Diego Comic Con next weekend. Next weekend. So in our next podcast is going to be San Diego Comic Con movie. Oh, uh, San Diego, baby! Uh, so, uh, <laughs> it's going to be all about the Eternals because uh, Angelina Rob Stark Jolie, has been cast, isn't he? Rob Stark, has he? Yeah, has maybe, he? Has yeah. an, uh, uh, Kamal Ninjani as well? Possibly. possibly. I've butchered Millie his name. Bob, yeah, who? Millie Brown. Oh, really? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, it. why not? Let's yeah. Okay. Uh, Basically, or to be revealed. What's going to happen next week at San Diego Comic Con is the entire cast of Eternals is going to be wheeled onto the stage. And, and, for, the, and for the people listening and don't know who the inter- Eternals are, can you just give us a real space uh, guys, super spacey people like Thor? Right, okay, but in space. Wow, um, <laughs> is that Galacticus? No. Oh, was I close? Were, he's going to be involved mm. at some point, probably. Oh, yeah. Um, I but, just remembered one guy. But the. Um, <laughs> The way into those super space characters is a human. So in Thor, the only way you can get into the Thor character is by putting him on Earth yep. and in humanizing him. Yep. Right, you have to have a way in. Nick Fury is our human way mm-hmm. into the Eternals, right? So that's okay. what that's revealing to me. Cool. Samuel L. Jackson better be getting paid for this. Yeah, I think he is. He's getting, yeah. His family going to be set up for the next 12 generations, yeah. I think, the amount of money he's getting paid. Apparently, there is a Fantastic Four... Uh, suggestion in this movie. I've heard about this. What in Spider Man? Yes. So you know, at the very end, when he's swinging through swinging New York, through New York, and he then glides at one point. Which, yes. by the way, him swinging through New York, best thing ever, was amazing. Because yeah. it wasn't like, it wasn't like, like, oh, I'm swinging, and then I'm swinging. It was like all over the shop, yeah. legs all over the place, uh, swinging. Yeah. That was really good. Thank and, you. You know the CGI and all of that yeah. sort of stuff. I thought that looked really good. You know, CGI? we've seen. You mean that wasn't real? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Sorry, man. <laughs> Damn, um, we've just lost it. Uh, Fantastic Four. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so apparently, there's a banner in the background that says something coming soon or coming soon, and it's uh, it go it's got one in a circle, two in a circle, three in a circle, and then dot dot dot. And the Fantastic Four logo is a four in a circle. Yeah. Right. So. Having just had Marvel by Fox, I can't imagine they're not going to do Fantastic Four. They're going to do Fantastic Four. So I think that's They'll do Fantastic Four before they do um, X-Men. Well, and it might be the thing. They might re- wheel it out at San Diego Comic Con again. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> getting back into the movie. Yes, Spider-Man. Um, what are we on? Bits that we liked? Bits that we didn't like? Yeah, a bit, a bit of both. Let's, let's talk about those things. Uh, I, I, I Genuinely, I thought that the kids, all the all the actors as the kids were great. I thought the story was brilliant. I I thought the the um, the gift that Tony Stark uh, uh, gave to uh, Peter from Beyond the Grave, Edith, even dead, I'm the hero, was absolutely brilliant. It was awesome. I mean, that is just it's just the sort of thing that Tony Stark would do. When he actually did that, I don't know because he didn't know Peter was coming back before suddenly he was back and then he died. Let's not scratch the surface. Mm. But hey, it was great. Um, What do you guys think about Spider-Man evolving in the way that he has? So this does lead into the end credits sequence as well. But let me lay down some stuff and then you guys give me a feeling on it. Um, Peter, his identity is known to the people closest to him. Mm-hmm. His powers are mostly what we expect from the comics. The Peter Tingle Spider Sense is kind of it's it's, it's kind of Spider Sense. It's, it's mm-hmm. a bit different. He is one hundred percent funded by the Stark Industries. Spider Man. Yeah. Yep. He can build his own suits now with whatever specification he wants. Mm-hmm. When he, he has, put his hand in the yeah, thing, yeah, like yeah. Tony Stark mm-hmm. used to do, chills. He is. He more or less has a man servant butler happy happy <laughs> right he's got a kind of he's got a world around him that supports him he's got a girlfriend now he's got good friends his his aunt knows who he is a spider-man his aunt smoking um, hot she is hot 
that Happy and his aunt are, 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 may, are maybe a family unit. There's mm-hmm. a whole lot there. In a relationship, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, and his identity is outed to the world. Yes. The status quo for Spider-Man is completely different to the standard status quo for, for Spider-Man in the comics. One final thought before you answer anymore. His identity being known does mirror Iron Man's identity being released at the beginning of Iron Man 1. And in this, Spider-Man almost becomes Iron Man and then has his identity revealed. There's a massive difference, though. Tony Someone Stark to, yeah, yeah. Tony Stark had the ego to just go, yeah, I am Iron Man, I am a superhero. Peter Parker does not want his identity to be revealed and that will put those closest to him in jeopardy yeah. because those closest to him... He can't protect them like Iron Man can protect people. They are going to be going about their normal lives. They're not surrounded by security like Pepper would have been and Happy probably, well, he was like a security guy, wasn't he? Mm. So Aunt May, um, MJ, Ned, anyone else, they are now going to be at the mercy of anyone who wants to get at Peter, just like we've seen in the comic books or we've seen in some of the movies. The ba- The villains, the bad guys, will use, will exploit any information Can they have. Him? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually think it's ingenious. However, does that mean Mysterio is still alive? Or is he definitely dead and some of those people helping him sorted that all yes. out? I think he's dead. I, think. I don't know. Or was it, uh, was it an illusion and only actually Peter was seeing that? Oh, Ben, that's a good shout. Never even thought about that. Where did you read that or did you come up with that by yourself? No, I, I heard it on someone talking about it but okay, it could fine. be an, an illusion could be real can we also by the way just say J. Jonah Jameson J. Jonah Jameson from the Raimi Spider-Man trilogy J. 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 K. Simmons being back yeah. confirms that a Spider-Verse could potentially be coming yeah because yeah. if J.K. Simmons can be J. Jonah Jameson in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man films and he's also J. Jonah Jameson in um, uh, these Spider-Man movies then could, and we never saw a J. J. Jameson in The Amazing Spider-Man. No. Does that potentially mean that Tobey Maguire could turn up as an older Spider-Man one day and and then What's-His-Face could turn up as... Uh, Andrew Garfield could turn up as the, as uh, an Ultimate-type Spider-Man one uh, day? I don't think they would get Maguire and, and Garfield back, but I think what they might do is get a Miles Morales. Oh. And so because Cheetah yes. has become Iron Man, yeah, he could become the mentor of a young... Spider-Man in the next one. I play, I'm, when you say um, Peter's become um, Iron Man, he's too young a lad. He hasn't got... It showed in the film how he's maturing. Yeah. Um, he's only 16. He's, so yeah. that's a lot of responsibility. Um, I'm not going to do the line, okay? <laughs> uh, no, but that's my point. That's why I wanted to know what you thought about yeah. it. Because it is different, right? It yeah. is. He's the youngest... Uh, is he the youngest superhero we know character-wise? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Out yeah. of uh, all the others? Yep. Yeah. What, in the MCU? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, is. He's, yeah, so, you know, he's... He's got all of those challenges. It showed yes. through the movie where he, well, where Mysterio tricks him to giving him Edith because yeah. he thinks he's worth it. This is from, uh, well, oh, you don't know the timeline, but even so, it could have been a week's worth of knowing someone just giving you, giving someone else like this is one of the most powerful, we- powerful weapons ever. Yeah. Take it yeah. because I think you're worth it. Mm. Mm. So he's gonna, he's. He's got a lot to deal with based on how that film ended. Because yeah. he doesn't want the responsibility that was being pushed onto him. He well, doesn't want. He doesn't want to be Iron Man. Excuse me. He doesn't want to be Iron Man because he he is a kid. He wants to go to school. He wants to get MJ and take her out on a date and maybe give her a kiss. Maybe a little bit of some other stuff as well. But hey, he's only a sixteen-year-old kid. But he can't do that anymore. Like Because with great power comes great responsibility. And his power is more than just his spider powers now. He he can build his own Spider-Man suits, mm-hmm. the Iron Man suits. Mm-hmm. He has the backing of Stark Industries. He has Happy Hogan. He is outed to the world. None of the great power that he has when Uncle Ben first says that to him... Mm-hmm is the same as the great power he has now because he has Edith. Well yeah he does but he's got yeah, a clear so he's got the challenges he have he's got to try and clear his name. Yeah. Um he has got to um try and turn around a public perception again of news. We know how news can be turned yeah. in our day and age now. Yeah. Um you know he's he's got a lot to deal with and how is he going to deal with that? I think he's going to have to call on a lot of friends to help him. Yeah. There could be people, you know. 
but but luckily it's a it's a it's a movie series where those people can come into it yeah oh that's what i was also sorry what i was going to say in, in in this incarnation of of spider-man we're seeing his technical ability yes before it's always been uh and that's, i know i'm going to get this wrong but i'm going to make my statement he's just been seen working for a paper and yeah. and that's it we don't know about his intelligence as a, as a scientist and you see that in the film you can see his brain working yeah. he needs a spider-man suit that is going to short out all of these drones because he knows web isn't going to cut it yeah. there is a little bit of him sorting out web fluid that uh will withstand uh, electricity in the Amazing Spider-Man Two, um, so he shows his smarts a little bit in that, but, but not that's not a great film. No, no, I not think at all. This film is, in uh, actual uh, fact, actually, it's Gwen Stacy who figures that out for him. Yeah, because she's then a he, scientist. That's it? right. Yeah, yeah. Um, having said what I just said about his, his status quo being changed, mm -hmm. I do think this is the most comic book accurate version of the character. Uh, absolutely. Peter Parker in the comics is one of the most intelligent people on the planet. Yes. He he can go toe to toe brain wise with Reed Richards. Yes, very clever. Plus, plus he's just saved the day. He's swinging through New York with his girlfriend and then boom, the Parker luck kicks in and everything <laughs> changes yeah, for him. Yeah, the Parker luck is anything anytime anything's going right for Peter, it's about to just suddenly just go wrong for him. I really him. love that scene by the way. This, that scene was brilliant. Absolutely what, when he's swinging brilliant. Around. And, sh and MJ is absolutely cacking her whack. Yeah. You know, this hard on those. <laughs> I think I, I, you've definitely used this before. I've used this before <laughs> on other podcasts. But, but she's screaming, I'm just going to close my eyes. And I'm just like, I would be. <laughs> the same, yeah. yeah. The only trouble with, this, with that scene is it makes me wish the whole movie was that. Like he's swinging around New York. That's what I want Spider-Man Well, that's doing. what so, you would hope that the next film is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. You would hope that I the did, next film will be that. I did make a bold statement that I'd been to all the places they've been to, and I haven't. I've yeah, been to we forgot them, about this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want to update us on where you've been? You've been to New York, have you, tough guy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah you have, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Shot a film there, didn't you? Yeah. You were the camera operator, weren't you? I was, yeah. You've done film studies, haven't you? I have, yeah. It's come up once or twice, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man, what are we saying? Love him. Best best, 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 best by, yeah. by a clear, yeah. clear yeah. mile. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think he uh, he embodies the role um, perfectly for me. Comic book. Comic book accurate, accurate. in every way. Compared and gone others. a different way, but still has the feeling of the comic book. Okay. It's good. But he's so dashing, isn't he? Oh, so dashing, yeah. <laughs> he's could a you very, be a little, very handsome Could you be quintessentially man. more English at that point? Well, Tom Holland is English. Well, I know, <laughs> but I'm just saying that you could have been just a little bit more dashing. I mean, wow. Uh, Let's get the Pims and talk about Tom. I do wonder, <laughs> this is nothing to do with the film at all, but I do wonder if maybe the uh, producers of the movies have gone, oh, there's a little bit of a height difference, isn't there, between Zendaya and Tom Holland? Because Tom Holland is like, what, five foot six, five foot seven, and Zendaya is taller in flats, so when she wears heels, she's significantly taller. Tom Holland is one meter seventy-three centimeters. So he's about five seven, yeah, five seven, I think. And she, as uh, Zendaya, is one meter seventy-eight centimeters. So she's about five nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There yeah. you go. So there, there is a height difference, and she puts heels on. There is a significant height difference. Here's interesting, interesting fact. So Zendaya was in The Greatest Showman with Zac Efron. Yes. yes. Zac Efron is 173, like Tom Holland. Wow. Oh, there you go. Yeah. What do you know? Well, oh, what, yeah. a, what a interesting fact. Yeah. yeah. I like that film. Google just told me it. Yeah, yeah I know. Is, Google is... Yeah. Uh, we need to just bring OK Google in here. <laughs> Thank you. Right, what else have we got to talk about? I don't know I've got much more to talk about from this film. What do we, uh, what do we, what do we think uh, ratings-wise? Where do we put this as a Marvel movie as part of the MCU as a whole? <sighs> Where do we think this sits? I feel like this is one of the better sequels to a Marvel film. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's the best sequel to a Marvel film. That's probably Winter Soldier. That's because Winter Soldier is the greatest Marvel movie you made. I will not argue with that. To date. To date. Okay. So, okay. so uh, but, yeah. but you're right. It's like any science. I mean, okay. I, everyone proves their point that says, like, you know, today someone says milk's good for you until just, 20 years later, well, it's bad for you. Whoa, well, whoa, whoa. Well, well, the just, earth was flat at one time. Let's just chill yeah, out, guys, was. because yeah. also... Did Columbus sorted that out? Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Christopher. Yeah. 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 Big C. Yeah. We should be reminded, of course, that Avengers Endgame was a sequel to uh, Avengers Infinity War, and that's probably... Mm. No, Winter Soldier's better. Oh, it's a more oh. solid movie. Oh, my God. In okay. my opinion. Wow. I think Winter Soldier is a more solid movie than Endgame. That's a bold statement. Yep. Okay, good. Stands alone. 
Uh, I would. Uh, should we review the uh, review it? Should we score it? What 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 are we going to score it? I think you should score it. You you do yours first, and James will do his, and I'll do mine. Because okay. you'll do whatever out of whatever. You'll yeah. do out of ten or five, and I'll do out of whatever's left. Um, okay. I, my score is that I um, really enjoyed it. Good. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good a, score. Yeah, yeah. I would probably give it uh, four web slingers out of five web slingers. I love the use of web slingers. <laughs> yeah. Four web slingers out of five. Okay. I'm going to give it eight versions of the multiverse. Eight different Marvel versions of the multiverse. So 616 being one, the ultimate one being another, whatever. Uh, out of uh, 10 things. Cool. Eight out of 10. Solid. Not the best, not the worst. Just a good, good, solid, fun action film. Side note when Mysterio said he that the earth they were on was 616 i was nearly enraged when i was like if he's telling the truth and he is actually a earth dimension hopping person that is not earth 616 the comics is earth 616 the mcu is a different um uh Uh, uh, you've never seen such rage in your face and then when it was like oh he's fake like i thought he was going to be because i was a little bit fooled i was like okay it's fine you felt better (laughs) that's good that's good you nearly felt like i did about yesterday yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah, there's not much, not much, not much else in there. That's it. Yeah, tell us what you thought of Spider-Man Euro Trip. Uh, he's away from home and he's on his own. Uh, yeah, uh, you can get us on the social medias, which is uh, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. It's all Nerds Chatting. Search for Nerds Chatting. Um, you can drop us an email, nerdschattingoutlook.com. Uh, if you liked this or you thought we were stupid, please feel free to leave us a review. Please email me. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, let me dial back. Please email Nate. Nate is desperate for an email from Why? someone. Because I get, I get like companies emailing us chatting. Do you at outlook dot com? Why? Well, what are they asking and I'm for? I'm like, oh, there's an email. Oh no. What are the companies asking for? Like, it's just, it's just. We'll host your. We've signed up to before. We'll oh, host wow. your podcast yeah. at a be, cheaper rate. Are we not going to be? Are we not going to become big time? Are they no, asking not companies like that? They're like, oh, they're like, uh, well, they can do one. Like, oh, your Twitter thing is a thing and you should do the thing and oh I'm right like, oh, great okay brilliant. we're just three i mean guys if you feel like you want to forward any of them on to me so i can actually read them at any point that's fine right podbean well uh, okay oh, geez me email, well we thank uh, we thank everyone that's able to, to host sweet us? yeah Hoot, sweet okay stop Hoot talking sweet. nathan yeah, nathan see, and uh, yeah. I'm getting a lot of inappropriate people trying to be friends with me on Instagram at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm is that too, because yeah. I don't know if they're listening to the pod? But no, I don't know. I'm two thirds <laughs> the way of my outro. Can you just give me, come on, give me back oh, control yeah. a sec. So come if on. you're listening, just send me an email, yeah? Just yeah. say hi. Anything. Just say hi. Just send, literally send nursechatting at outlook.com an email that just says hi. Yeah. If you do that, we'll give you something. Don't know what. Might advice. just be a, might just Probably be. advice. I'll give you some, I'll give you some. Life advice. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Holy shit. Don't do it. <laughs> Our podcast is hosted on Podbean. That's nursechatting.podbean.com or something. Um, yeah, we're on YouTube. This podcast is on YouTube. Is it? Uh, you can get us on Spotify and we're on iTunes. And if you feel like giving us a review, reviews help because they uh, the more reviews we have, the more people sort of see us because it bumps us up in also, something. Telling people. Telling yeah, people just tell. If you don't want to, if you don't want to leave a review, that's fine. Just tell someone. Just tell them, mate. Like if you're hey, the these guys are jerks. You, you might work, like them. You work right, and you're, you're doing you're doing all the thing you do. You're tapping, 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 tapping. You're doing your thing. You typing, do. typing. And then you, you take a moment to breathe, and you. And the guy or girl next to you says, um, "Do you see that? Did you see that new Spider-Man film?" You go, "Yeah, I did." But also, I listened to this podcast called Nurse Shannon, and they reviewed it. You should check it out. That's what you need to do right now. I agree wholeheartedly with what you said, but we can do that as well. I do this all the time when I'm at, at the uni. They're just like, I do a podcast. What? Yeah, I'm scared to tell people. I did it in Vodafone the other day. Did you? There was a girl who had tattoos on her arms, and it was like it was like a Superman and, and stuff. And I was like, oh, cool, I like your tattoos. By the way, I do a ch- Nurse Channing podcast. Listen <laughs> to my podcast. <laughs> did did you call the police? Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please leave, sir. Please leave. That's awkward. Yeah, it was. Yeah. No, it was good. Yeah. Tell people. Okay, we'll be back in a couple of weeks to talk about everything that happened at San Diego Comic Con. San Diego! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Bye.